You are watching the latest edition of the Wellness Hour. I'm Randy Oppers. Today's topic, breast augmentation. My first guest is a well-known cosmetic surgeon. Last year, we met with Dr. Mark Berman, where he introduced the pocket protector breast implant device. This device is not just improving breasts, but improving lives. If you are considering breast augmentation, or you have a problem with your current breast implants, you have to listen and see what this new device offers for women. My advice, stick around for the latest edition of the Wellness Hour. The Wellness Hour, an in-depth discussion with today's top physicians and medical leaders. And now, your host, Randy Alvarez. You are watching the latest edition of The Wellness Hour. I'm Randy Alvarez. My first guest is Mark Berman, MD. Dr. Berman is on the Board of Trustees of the American Academy of Cosmetic Surgery and on the Board of Trustees of the American Board of Cosmetic Surgery. He is past president of the American Society of Cosmetic Breast Surgery. He has practices in Santa Monica, California, and currently, for the last year and a half, has been practicing with the Plastic Surgery Institute of Palm Desert, doing all of their breast surgery. When people ask me, who they should go to for breast augmentation. He's one of the surgeons I always recommend. Dr. Berman, welcome to the show. Thank you, Randy. It's a pleasure to be here. Dr. Berman, a lot has changed uh, in the last year and a half since we last talked. Well, Tell absolutely. Me. We have now a large number of women who have not only had the pocket protector fix difficulties with their breasts, but also a large number of women are having it done for the very first time. And when you say difficulties, what do you mean? I mean, who's a candidate for the pocket protector that it's helping? There are many women who have had problems with their breasts, commonly called capsule contracture. That's where the breasts form a hard scar around the implant, and the breasts look like rocks basically on the chest. They're very hard, unnatural, maybe very round looking. A lot of women have this. It's a very common problem. Any woman who's had breast implants over 10 years probably has a 40 to 50 percent chance of having had capsule contracture. So it's real common. So how does a pocket protector make these breasts soft? Again. This material, Randy, is one of the safest implant materials in the world. You see some lines on it because this is actually rejected imp uh, implant material, but we're using it for ex example. It is basically microporous Teflon. It's the same material as Gore-Tex. It's made by a different company. It's what we call expanded polytetrafluoroethylene. It's a big name. We call it EPTFE. This very safe material has been used for years in heart patch, hernia, aortic uh, replacement, vein grafts, and what happens is the body actually grows into the material, it integrates with the body and becomes a natural part of the body. So the whole idea is instead of getting a scar around this material, this material integrates and keeps the body open. In other words, when we do a breast surgery, we're creating a pocket. And inside that space, you have raw surface, and the body wants to scar back down together upon itself. Okay. How can we prevent that? Well, with the traditional breast implant, if you put it in there, you still can't keep that raw surface from so scarring down. So the implant down. rests against the, the tissues of the skin? The typical of the breast, of the breast implant rests against that pocket. And even implants that are texturized, that have this fuzzy coat, and may reduce some of the scarring, still can't keep that entire pocket open. So by having a, a product that actually integrates with the body and lines the entire pro, uh, pot, pocket, then the body can't scar back down on itself. So in essence, we have a liner around this pocket, and then the implant just floats inside that pocket. And that way, we can keep the implant soft and natural. Okay, Dr. Berman, people come up to me, and they've seen your interview on my website in the past, and they said this pocket protector sounds a little gimmicky. And... But this is no gimmick. I mean, this is a lining for the breast implant. I was the first surgeon in the world using this material in cosmetic surgery 20 years ago, 21 years ago, 1980, <clears throat> excuse me, 1983. And since that time, we've worked on developing an implant device for the breast. And the problem with the breast implant is very simple. For years, doctors have been trying to and companies have been trying to either put in implants with gel, with saline, peanut oil, you name it, soybean oil, hydrogel, cohesive gel, and there's two problems. One is, how do you keep the pocket open and how when do you... When you say pocket, define pocket for those people that are watching this. That's just where the implant goes, right. in the breast. Basically, when you do an augmentation mammoplasty, a breast augmentation, you're going to create a space, and that space is either going to be on top of the pectoralis muscle, the chest wall muscle, or it's going to be deep underneath it. And generally, that space is called the pocket. That's okay. where you're going to put the implant to give the additional volume or shape to a breast. 
Now, the problem is we've tried to fix all these problems with a single implant when we have two problems. And the two problems are, one, imitating breasts, which we can do very nicely with silicone gel, and to some extent with saline solution. And the other problem, which is even more important, is how do you keep that space open? So that pocket, or that space, is now kept open with the pocket protector. It's no gimmick, it's actually a very useful device. And the thing that's surprising about it is very simple. Uh, I'm surprised we haven't come up with this, so this in is, a long time this ago. So this is just a sleeve that goes over the breast implant itself to keep from scar tissue forming. That's is that right. correct? Well, that's partly right. So the breast right. won't get hard? This goes, in the, this goes in the space first. The body grows into it without forming a scar because okay. it actually integrates with the material. Hmm. At the same time of surgery, an implant is placed inside the pocket protector. So when the patient's done, she goes home with her chest wrapped up in a compressive bandage. This forces the pocket protector out to the perimeter of the breast, allowing it to grow into the natural tissues while the implant just floats freely inside of the material. Now there are other things that the pocket protector prevents from happening. I guess rippling, uh, things like that? But that's a very good point. If you use a good material like a smooth uh, gel, the smooth gel implants are less likely to ripple, particularly in thin-skinned women. And that's one of the things we see down here in the desert quite commonly, is very thin-skinned women. Now some of the breast implants, actually the shells, even on the, th the smooth gel implants are still a little bit thick. We found that we, if we use a high profile implant, one that's filled a little bit more, we can prevent rippling. So the pocket protector can prevent rippling that you would normally get with the uh, thick textured implant. It acts as an internal brassiere, keeps the breast from drooping because it holds the implant up. It's an integrated uh, uh, pocket between the body and the patient. So what happens if the implant were to rupture, all the material is trapped inside the pocket protector and cannot spread out into the body. Because the material is integrated with the body, if the person gets an infection, maybe a dental abscess that gets into their system, it should not be able to cross through the membranes and into the area around the implant. And by the way, that's what commonly happened with breast implants. Even with textured implants, the body cannot form uh, any integration with it. In other words, there's a scar around the material and if you get an infection in your body, it can go through the scar and then attack the implant and it will just have a kind of a chronic infection So for safety reasons, this is good as well? That's what we think. We think this is going to add safety to it and additionally, if you need to exchange your implant, it's an easy operation because now the pocket's already open. You just make an incision, take your implant out, put a new one in. And we've found that over a course of 10 years, the average woman has to exchange her implants because of rupture or in saline, maybe because of deflation, or maybe because they've changed in some way. They've had a couple children, maybe they want to go a little bit larger. Or maybe because their lifestyles change, they want to decrease the volume of the breast implant. So if you want to exchange your implant, this will also make it a lot easier too. And that will decrease the cost of secondary surgery. A secondary surgery typically requires removing all the scar tissue, redoing the pocket space, and then putting in a new implant. With the pocket protector, you simply make a small incision, open it up, take the implant out, put a new one in, close you up. 10, 15 minute operation. Are you teaching other uh, surgeons to use the pocket protector? Since last year, we've had a number of surgeons uh, request material about the pocket protector. I'm still the, the person who has to do the last phase of manufacture of the pocket protector, so I don't want this to get too far out of hand, but I have about six other surgeons around the country who have currently used the pocket protector very successfully and very excited about it. So we're ready to step up to the next phase of testing, which is going to be a large, simple study around the whole country, and including going into Europe as well. Okay, to a woman that is watching this, and she's saying, I just want natural looking breast. Do I need this pocket protector? What, what, what's the advantage to somebody that just wants a natural looking breast? Because we've talked off camera, and you say this is what you want to achieve. So tell me about that part. Well, what's happened is, for a long time, I was telling women, you don't need the pocket protector unless you have very large breasts that are very thin, or you're having revision because you've had problems with scarring. What I'm finding now is once people learn about the pocket protector, and by the way, I don't make, want this to sound like a sales pitch. I'm just telling you this is what we're finding, that once they find out about the pocket protector, they realize it's kind of an insurance policy. It allows them to have a very soft, natural breast. It allows them to put in either a smooth gel or smooth saline implant that feels more soft and natural. It can stay on top of the muscle so they don't have to have 
a painful operation, putting the implant underneath the muscle, and allows them to have a condition where they have um, a relative uh, insurance policy on the future, so that if the implant does rupture or has a problem, they can easily replace it. I think what women want are not just big mounds on their chest that look uh, voluptuous, but they want them also to feel soft and natural. And so for a while we've been putting in all these saline filled implants that look like big water balloons. And they're okay in many women. In fact, many women like that. If that's the look they want, I wouldn't even suggest a pocket protector. However, you can still get that look with a pocket protector because all the pocket protector d is doing is lining that space. And the implant ultimately is providing the natural shape for the breast. What about the numbers of all that you have put in with the pocket protector? Any getting hard? Actually, we've had one that's gotten a little bit hard out of 170 implants, but she had a completely ruptured uh, gel, uh, and it was just a, a total mess of a breast to fix. However, we'll probably be able to fix that one so far. What we've seen, though, is we've taken women who've had up to seven, eight, nine operations without being able to improve their breasts at all and fix them with a single operation on the pocket protector. That's without drains, without any fancy medications, just by simply removing all the scar tissue, revising the pocket, and putting the pocket protector in place with a smooth uh, implant inside of it. Dr. Berman, we're going to take a quick break. Uh, but as a recap here, this pocket protector is for those that have any kind of a breast problem hardening, uh, things like that. Is that correct? That's exactly right. If you have hard breasts, if you have breasts that's misshapen, sometimes the pocket was made too large, this actually helps keep the breast implant in a pro proper position. And it's great for any woman who needs revision of her uh, previous surgery, and it's also turned out to be a very good uh, material for anybody having breasts done for the first time. Okay, tell me this, why then aren't these, uh, you know, these billion dollar companies coming up with their own pocket protector. Why well, you? Why did it take a surgeon to invent this product? Um, I have the mind of a 10-year-old. You need to have a very simple mind to come up with something like this, I think. This is such an easy device. I think what it is is an uh, example of unnecessary limiting constraints, where we've been spending all our money trying to develop a single product when we needed two products. So to me, this was very simple. So every woman that has breast augmentation or a breast implant should have this sleeve or this pocket protector in your view? Uh, it's becoming my preference. I didn't originally think it was going to be necessary on every patient. Now I'm finding that it's probably the best implant device you can have for every single person. For natural looking breasts, for women that don't want to have hard breasts. And yeah. reduce. That's right. Okay, good. We're going to take a quick break. We're going to meet one of your patients and, uh, and see if they're uh, as happy as you say they are. You're watching The Wellness Hour. I'm Randy Ivers. We're here with Dr. Berman. We're talking about breast augmentation. We'll be right back. You're watching The Wellness Hour. I'm Randy Alvarez. We're talking to Dr. Berman and one of his patients about breast augmentation. Dr. Berman, uh, tell us about your patient. Kelly here had a number of breast operations in the past with multiple problems. And one of the things I thought was important is would give everybody an opportunity to, to talk to one of my patients so they can see this isn't just about having big breasts, it's about having a nice shape and feeling good, feeling like a woman. Because I think this really not just, what I found over the last years, this isn't just making breasts better, it's really changing lives, making lives better. Now changing lives, how so? Kelly, and, and thank you for coming on the show, by the way. Well, my pleasure. Uh, you've had a lot of surgery. Yes, I, I had, well, I had a mastectomy, okay. um, well, 20 some years ago. And I've had five, I think five surgeries since then, trying to... Um, make them look natural. Why so many surgeries? Um, because each time I would get a set of implants they would they would uh, start hardening up. And the last... This is common. Dr. This is really common. The, the, the procedure she had is one of the most deforming procedures developed. When you leave the breast, take out all the breast tissue, no matter what you put inside of it, whether you put it under the muscle or on top of the muscle, it tends to get hard. And there's no way of keeping that pocket That hardness open. is scar tissue. It's, is that correct? Yeah, that's scar tissue. Okay. And so her breasts would feel quite unnatural and feel very firm. Okay. Would, not only that, they were misshapen. They, you know, they, they started to create, I mean, they didn't look like breasts. They were a little So how long would they last, shape? by the way? You would have a breast augmentation or an implant. They would get hard in a couple of years. Well, the last set was, had been hard for a long time. I couldn't find a doctor that would do anything about it. And what they tell I, you, as a matter of fact? They just didn't want to touch it. They, you know, that they, they, they told me I had to live with it. That was the best it was going to be. How did you find Dr. Berman? I heard about him on the radio. I listened to Al Rantel. Okay. And I heard about the procedure, and 
called him. Now, is this common, Dr. Berman? This is uh, incredibly common. You know, there's probably three million women who've had breast augmentation procedures done, including, um, not even including reconstructive procedures, and we figure at least 50 to 60 percent of them have problems with their breasts. That could be fixed. Yeah, and, and many of them, just like Kelly, they've been told there's nothing we can do. They've been, if you've been operating on four or five times, what surgeon wants to go in there for a fifth or sixth time? I mean, you, you just know you're not going to get any result. And that's, again, because we've been trapped by using one implant. And when you have this terribly scarred pocket, how are you going to keep it open? There's only one way that I know right now. That's with the pocket protector. And so, um, again, I hate to make it sound like a sales pitch, but this is such a simple product that lines that pocket, allows it to stay open, and it gives me an opportunity to put a smooth, soft implant in place. Okay, Kelly, how long have you had your uh, newer implants in with the pocket protector? Um, about seven months now. Feel natural? I love him. I, he, he's a miracle worker. What is your message, by the way? We have about one minute left. Your message. I'll ask you first, Kelly. What do you want women to know that have hard breasts out there? That they don't have to live with it. Really? That, that there's something that they can get it fixed now. Women don't just want to have big breasts, they want to have a nice shape, and they want it to feel natural. And that's really the key behind this whole pro project of the pocket protector, to help women restore their breasts to a nice natural shape and to feel, feel whole, feel like a normal woman. You spend most of your time fixing women's breasts? Well, right now, most of us have been doing the redo, so reconstruction okay. and the fixing. Good. But we're also getting a lot of people coming in for the first time now, too. Okay, I want to thank both of you for coming on the show, especially you. Thank you. We're also going to, up next, we're going to have another one of your patients, a first-time augmentation patient. So, Kelly, thank you again for coming on the show. My pleasure. You've been watching the Wellness Hour. I'm Randy Alvarez. Up next, one of Dr. Berman's patients tells us uh, her experience. We'll be right back. You're watching the Wellness Hour. I'm Randy Alvarez. We're here with Dr. Berman and one of his patients, Donna. Donna, welcome to the show. Thank you. Dr. Berman, tell us Donna's story. Donna's a beautiful young woman, has two children, and after pregnancy, she's lost some of the volume in her breast. She wants to enhance her breasts, make the, get the shape back, and yet that space potentially is very large. So we need something like the pocket protector, in this case the pocket protector, to line that pocket, to keep the pocket open, and then allow us to put a nice shaped implant inside. But, so you can avoid going with a huge breast implant with the pocket protector. Well, that's that right? Well, that's one of the things, because if, if you put an implant in, even if it's textured, and that pocket is larger than the implant, that pocket will contract down to that implant. So the implant may stay soft for a while. In fact, we know that uh, textured implants can stay soft. Uh, generally, uh, less than 4% of them will get hard. However, if you go over a long enough period of time, maybe five years, you'll find that the numbers start going up towards 35% of hardness. So this just gives the ad act added protection of keeping the implant soft, as well as being a potential against rupture or any other problems. Dr. Berman, did she have other options? Did you present her with other options or just a pocket protector? Everybody gets all the options. Uh, Donna had several other options besides the pocket protector. So why then, Donna, did you, uh, with all the options, go with the pocket protector? I felt that it was the best uh, route for me, to, for, to, for me to go because of nursing with my son. I had a large open space and I've had friends who have had breast augmentation that do have some encapsulation. That's and the hardening of the breast? Yes. So that was one of your fears? Yes, that was one of my fears. And I, I liked the fact that it was inside this pocket and it would free float and look more natural. And then I didn't have to go as big as my pocket, the opening in my breast was from, from nursing. And I, I felt that it would be more assurance in case something did happen. If it did rupture, then it would stay within the pocket. And I also liked the idea that I could also change it at some point in time. If the size of the breast didn't suit me, I could go back in. And it was very simple to open it up, open the pocket up, take the implant out, put a new one in. And I know that people have had to have them redone. If you don't have the pocket, you had to go in and, and scrape everything out and start all over. And that was just a frightening idea so for me. So you felt like it was an insurance policy? Absolutely. Against things going wrong? Yes. Absolutely. So, Dr. Berman, why aren't all surgeons doing it this way? I think they might be in a few years. There's really a lot of excitement. I've spoken at some major national meetings now, and I'm getting doctors coming up to me and saying, I can see this becoming the standard of care within the next five to ten years. And so, right now, I happen to be one of the only doctors on the you know, in the world using this material. We have a number of doctors, as I mentioned earlier, who've just done some of their first, and one guy's done about three or four cases with the pocket protector, but it's just starting to get going. 
we're at a point that probably within a few months we'll have a large simple study going on all over the country and patients will be able to go to other doctors in the desert in every other city and get this pocket protector they don't have to come only to me okay this sleeve this pocket protector it sounds like it keeps in case you were to get a leak it would save that keeps you from getting a hard breast and also holds it in place are those the three Th those are three good points, but Donna made a great point. What about if you need to exchange it later on? And we've already had that opportunity. A few of our women, who patients who have had pocket protectors for over a year, we noticed that they wanted to increase the size of their implant or, or change the implant. And so we were able to go in, make a small incision, and the pocket's wide open. Normally, you know what I have to do? We have to go in, take out all the scar tissue, revise the space, that costs more money than the primary surgery does to begin with. So for that investment, that initial thousand dollar investment for a pocket protector, saved thousands of dollars on a, you made a, a complicated operation, very simple operation. Okay, so the pocket protector is clearly then not just for the redos or the hardening of the breast, but for the first time breast augmentation patient. Mm -hmm. Donna, we have 30 seconds. Tell us about Dr. Berman on a personal note. The overall experience. It, the, the experience was unbelievable. I, I couldn't ask her for anything more. I think that all the women should go and see him and, and give it a chance. I mean, the breasts are very soft. They're very supple, natural. The staff is wonderful. He's wonderful. I, I cannot say enough good things about it. Really. Great. I want to thank uh, both of you for coming on the thank show. Thank you. You've been watching The Wellness Hour. We'll be right back. You're watching The Wellness Hour. I'm Randy Alvarez. We're talking about breast augmentation with Dr. Berman and one of his patients, Pamela. Pamela, thank you for coming on the show. It's great to be here. You've also invited your husband. Yes. Off-site, great, great Dr. Great to be here. Collins. Thank you very much. Welcome to you. Glad to be here. Dr. Berman, tell us about Pamela. Well, I think Pamela's going to tell you about herself. I'd like to hear her words on this one. Really? Okay, Pamela. Now, according to my notes, I think it should be mentioned, uh, if you don't mind, you've gone through about five reconstructive breast surgeries or breast surgeries that all went bad. Yes. It was nightmarish. I won't go into the details of it. It started when I was 18 and continued on um, up until I met Dr. Berman. And the ones that were before him were J just full of scar tissue. They Your were, breasts were hard. They everything. were hard. They were cold. Cold. Is that they. Right? Oh, it was. Um, I was so uncomfortable wearing any kind of a bathing suit or anything that showed. I mean, it was always up to here, <laughs> and uh, not letting a lot of people get real near me because it it, it was uncomfortable. I Let mean, me ask your husband, uh, Dr. Collins. Yes, you were there the whole time. But that's basically true. And, and five surgeries later, I think we've arrived. And, Is that right? And uh, I think that this will be and should be the standard of care in all cases. I'm familiar with the product. We've used it in dentistry for numerous years. So and you felt it was safe? I mean, you're a doctor, you're absolutely. a dentist that uses these materials. The minute my wife brought the, the sample of Gore-Tex home, uh, I said, well, this is Gore-Tex. This should be fantastic. And sure enough, we've, we've got a, a winner here. Okay, Dr. Berman, is this, is this common? I mean, there are women out there, thousands of women, you've said, that have hard breasts, they've been through four or five surgeries, and they say, I give up. So uh, I mean, is that the case? I told you earlier, of three million women, there's probably half of them have problems with their breasts. So it's obviously very common. And so now we have some way of going in fairly simply. We actually go in with a device like this, with a safety vac and an extended cartery, remove all the scar tissue without any bleeding. You invented that this also. This is what, also an invention of mine okay. called the safety vac. It stands for smoke and fluid tube evacuator. And allows you to dissect out the scar tissue without almost no bleeding. And then replace the uh, implants with a pocket protector and smooth implant, and voila, you get a nice soft breast. Okay, Pamela, your breast now. Oh, they, five they, other surgeries, the breast became hard. Yes, and you know, now. How long has it been, by the way? It's, well, I just had this last one about a year ago. Okay. Okay. They're not hard. No, they're not hard. They feel natural, they fall natural, there's no ridge. So whenever I wear anything that has a little bit low cut, it looks wonderful. Let me and ask I your just, husband, because we, you yes. asked that he be here. <laughs> yes. Yeah. So Dr. Collins, let me ask you, you know, Dr. Berman said it, it's changing people's lives, their self-esteem is affected. Well, your experience there. Self-esteem is extremely crucial to, to all your psychological welfare. 
And if you feel a portion of your body is, is mutilated, uh, not functioning properly. Did your wife feel that way? Yes. Absolutely. Absolutely. And, and uh, due to misdiagnosis in the past and, and uh, more antiquated techniques, uh, we finally progressed to a point where we have a success that is going to be a long-lasting success, not something that we have to go worry about changing every three to four, five, six years, which is what makes this so unique and valuable to the patients in the United States. Okay, Dr. Berman, and, uh, and thank you, Dr. Collins. We're completely out of time. Uh, final, final message to anybody watching this, hard breast, worried about leaky breast, they want to do a redo, they want to take it in, take it out, Tell us. I really think a pocket protector may become the standard of care. And obviously I have an interest in this material, having been the developer and having a patent on it. But again, to me, the important thing is not making big breaths, is having shapely breaths that feel nice, feel natural, and the person's happy. So like we said before, it's not about having beautiful breaths, it's about having happy lives. We're out of time. I want to thank uh, both of you for coming on the show. And Dr. Collins, thank you. Thank you very much. You've been watching The Wellness Hour. I'm Randy Alvarez. If you would like information about future airings of this show, or if you'd like to see this interview, you can visit our website at wellnesshour.com. For now, I wish you good health.